The more experience you have with reading charts, probably the more you want the chart to be as clean as possible. That's what happened to me. I used to have a lot of stuff on my chart. And over the years, you know, one by one, they went away. Okay, so back to what I was talking about. You want a swing to start in a good way. A good way means, see if I can find a perfect one. They are so rare, actually. Usually it doesn't start like that. But when they start in a very good way, strong, and then it has some characteristics. So you don't want to really get pushed by the market. That's a very important sign. So let's say we have, you know, we have a wedge and then we have a signal bar and we're expecting more in this direction. How do we want this to start? Well, we want, first of all, we want good context. That's always first and foremost. Second one, we want a strong signal bar. Why do we want a strong signal bar? It increases the probability that the idea will, uh, or the, the setup will, will play out. Yeah, but why? It's a counter trend it's trade. So you, you want the opposite side to take the trade only if it's a good bar. Uh, yeah, but more importantly, you also want all the stop order traders to say, aha, uh -huh, this, is, this is the place I'm starting to buy. So you want the bears to see that, as you said, Rajesh, that, okay, this looks like it's not going down anymore, so we're going to get out. And you also want like a flag raised to everybody else who is half asleep at their computers that, hey, this is changing direction, wake up and start trading. So that good signal bar alerts both sides that something new is going to happen. Therefore, it's important. Then you want the bar. So this is strong signal bar has like several line items itself. You don't want big risk. So no big risk. And why is that? Well, except the obvious one. The obvious one is, well, I don't want to risk too much. But what is the real reason for it? I mean, is it because reversals are low probability trades? Sorry, say again, please. Is it because reversals are usually low probability trades? Yeah, but that is not the reason. You want a relatively reasonable risk so that a lot of traders participate in that trade. Because if this bar is a big bar, okay, what happens is a lot of traders would not will not participate. They wouldn't buy. They will say, oh, this is too big. I have to risk like 15 points. I'm not going to take that trip. So it automatically filters out part of the demand. And you don't want that. The reasonable risk trade, no big risk, also means there's going to be a lot of participants because it's manageable, it's reasonable. So people will actually bet on this bar to work. And that increases the demand. So odds of follow through go up. You also want except that good context and good signal bar, you usually also want a secondary reason. And this is something like test of support, some form of a trap, you know, something else. But this secondary reason is also important. And then beyond this, you want follow through. Let's say this is like phase one, that you see the setup all the way to here. And then in phase two, you also need good entry bar. And good entry bar is important because we don't want to see a good signal bar and immediately an inside bar. We want this bar to get triggered so people who put stops above the high of this bar, they get filled. Now they are in the market. Bears who exit above the high of this bar, they are out of the market. So that good entry bar is meaningful information. And at this point, when you have your entry bar, then we can say at this point, there is a higher probability for a swing. So swing becomes high probability after two bars, signal bar and, and good entry bar. Now, if you are a mostly limit order trader, like, like I, then we are interested in the first pullback. Oh, and there's one more thing, sorry. so. So that one more step is, so there's a six here. You want the always in direction to flip. 
And then this first pullback is very, very high probability. So this is equal to saying what happened after this bar was we got our entry bar, okay? And let's say this was the moving average and the moving average turned because of this reversal. So now we have our second close above the moving average. Now it is always in long probably. And then we are looking for a pullback to buy. And then all the algorithms for buying in the pullbacks starts to trigger. One of them is look for a bad sell signal bar, like a doji something, and wait for this to get triggered. So you put a limit order down below, expecting the next bar to produce this tail and immediately reverse up. That's one entry after, after the market flips to always in line. Obviously, the other ones are like high one and high two buys, which we are going to talk about them. There are a lot of details based on my experience teaching them. Most people don't know, but this is the process. So you need a graceful reversal that has all of these components, good context, strong signal bar, not forcing you to take big risks. Oh, um, let's say there is one more thing here just to save time. I'm going to squeeze it here. So this is going to be seven. There is a six here, non climactic move, right? So you want this move up. This shouldn't be a climax because if it is a climax, then a lot of the people who bought down, down there, they're always limit order buyers, especially if you have that game on set up. Let's say the game on happened here. There was a tail here and this tail overlapped it. So now you have game on. Game on means, hey, limit order buyers, come in, start buying. So they start buying here. And their expectation is that the market will go back and close this distance. It will go at least above that this swing point. All right. So if this move is climactic and it quickly reaches there, they're going to take their profits. So you don't want that. You want, you want a non-climactic move. So you see these things, you see control, overprice, and over time. But not just price only, because if it is a climax, this only leads to a climax. But if it is both control over price and over time, then this leads to a trend. This one leads to trading range usually, if it is climactic, right? So this process is important in these six or seven steps.